Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I've had a few requests from you guys to see a full setup of the molder. So that's what we're gonna to tackle today. So a few of you guys are curious on, on how I set up the molder and today I'm switching around to flooring so I figured I would record it for you. Flooring is probably my most common setup. Uh, right now I just have straight knives in here. So I'm going to pull them out and we'll do a full setup here. I am putting in my flooring knives. Now I have dedicated heads for my flooring because I use them more than anything. These are actually aftermarket corrugated heads that fit right on. So I already have the knives in there and set, and I also know my shim pack to get to the right height. So if you're starting from scratch, I'll pull out one of these wood miser heads. Obviously, the first step you would do, you would unbolt that, pull that knife out, put in whatever you're cutting, with and then you'd have to adjust your shims to get the right height for your setup but i'm kind of jumping ahead because this is a common setup for me and i like i said i have a dedicated head for it so simply the shims go in the head goes in carefully you don't want to nick those knives against anything do the same thing on this side. You certainly don't need separate heads, but it makes your life a lot easier if you have something you're running quite often. Okay, so I know those are at the right height already because that's, like I said, a common setup for me. So then simply, you just take some spacers. Need one more. And what you're trying to do here, you just need to get up above these threads so that your bolt will catch. Let's see here. Uh, that's the wrong one. This side is standard thread, this side is reverse thread, so those will only go on one way. The same thing here. Okay, I will tighten them once I set this camera down and have two hands. So your side heads are now set. I am actually not changing the top and bottom planer knives because they're sharp and I don't need to. If you were going to, you would just loosen each one of these Gibbs screws with a 10 millimeter wrench and then you'd use an Allen wrench in here. Actually, for this top head, you'd probably leave them set and just double check with your knife set and gauge the bottom head is still the scallop style for those of you that are familiar. The Allen, that little Allen screw there actually sits into the knife and you use that to raise and lower your knife. So it's actually in there. So you actually have to unscrew that screw to be able to pull the knife out. And same thing, you'd pull that out, put a new knife in, tighten your Gibbs screws. So the top head, like I said, the machine actually comes with a knife setting jig, which basically just sits on top, straddles the cutter head, and you just kind of do it by feel until you get resistance there. I actually, I should have pulled that out for you guys, I didn't, but it's, it's pretty straightforward if you've ever set planer blades before. The bottom head sets like a joiner. So you take a straight edge and you lay a straight edge on the table and you adjust those knives until you just kiss that straight edge. So it'll be, you know, so you get it dead flat with the, the 
what we'd call the outfeed table on a joiner. So that's how you'd set those and then you tighten them up. So that's that's pretty straightforward, you know, just like setting a planer and joiner knives. So the next thing we're gonna do is set our fences on the fixed side. So the machine comes with just a straight edge that will work for you. I actually have this setting jig. This was a Logosol product. I don't know if Woodmiser makes these, honestly. You'd have to contact Woodmiser. I don't know if these are still available from Logosol. This I bought years ago. And it's the same concept. If I set this here, it has this little two millimeter cutout. This is what you get from Woodmiser. It's just a straight edge that has this cutout. This thing is nice because it has these magnets. And what it does, let me slide it into the machine here. Uh, hold on. Technical difficulties. Okay. So what it does that's so nice, it clips to your fixed cutter and then you can move the whole thing in and out. And an important part of this setup is you need to skew your fences. So you would think you want these fences going dead straight through this machine. Well, that's not actually the best way to set these up. If you offset these a little bit, put your fences on an angle, when the workpiece is moving through, those feed rolls are actually gonna be pushing against that fence and it helps hold your stuff against the fence. You don't have that advantage if you go straight through and you certainly don't wanna be skewed this way because then everything's gonna run away from your fence. So if you can see here, this has a little adjustment and I have this skewed slightly. And I have this fence skewed ever so slightly to match that jig. I, I set them up so they match. So, what we do here, let me set it down. Hopefully, you can see this. Start cranking in our side cutter. Now this is going to be different on every setup, depending on what kind of knives. Obviously the easiest are straight knives because that's just a straight cutter. With these tongue and groove cutters here, uh, without getting too much in the weeds, my bottom cutter underneath the tongue is offset a little bit more than the top, so I know I have to raise this up to get an accurate reading. But all you're doing here you have to find the, the furthest, or I should say, you have to find the point where the wood is gonna ride on the fence. And you just crank that cutter in until it just kisses. Right there. Now hopefully I'm not making this overly complicated, but what you have to picture is when that wood goes through the cutter head, what is bearing against this outfeed fence and that's what you have to set it to. So it's your furthest point that's gonna ride against the fence. So I now have this straight edge in place. Now if you're using the straight edge that comes with the machine, it's where it gets a little trickier because you're gonna to have to kind of hold that in place manually, find that point, and then set your fences from there. So that's set to where we want it for the cutter head we're using. Now the beauty of this MP360, I just loosen my clamp and I just turn the lever until I bring that fence right up. And I have some trash in there. I have a little bit of sawdust and then I'm gonna have to clean out. But I'm gonna bring that right up against the fence here, the straight edge. So at that point, my front fence is set, and that's why you have this little two millimeter cutout, because that's how much that's gonna take off. So if you wanted to take off more, you just leave that fence back more, and that'll take a heavier cut. So you can tailor that to what kind of cut you need to take. So now our front fence is essentially set, and this back fence, you move up until you just touch. 
Now this is hard to do one-handed and honestly I'm going to go back after I'm done filming here and really fine tune this to get it perfect but I'm giving you the basic steps here. So you bring that up till it touches your guide and now that should be dead set parallel with as this comes through the cutter head the material that's left should hit that fence and be perfect. We're going to tighten this fence up for right this second. Okay, so now your fences should be set in line with a two millimeter offset in this case. So the wood's going to come through. It's going to get two millimeters taken off, shaped to its profile, ride out the outfeed fence, and go right through. So now that head is set, your fences are set. So now, we back this back out. We take this off. This is easier said than done one hand. Now we have to set this side. So this is going to be very variable depending on what you're doing. If you're going for a dimension, like if you're planning four sided stock, say you want to hit three and a half inches or if you're doing some kind of casing and you have to put a profile on. Honestly, the first time you set up for a profile is the hardest because after that, you can use a, a sample piece. Now, in this particular case, I'm setting up for flooring and the customer gave me a sample because we're trying to match old existing flooring. Unfortunately, the sample's cracked here, which is gonna make our life a little bit more difficult. But what I'm gonna do and I don't know if I can do this one-handed on camera with a cracked piece here. This is going to go against the fence. And I'm going to match it up to my tongue cutting side here. I'm going to crank this in until I hit the right dimension. So let me set you down again and see if I can get that done. Let's see, I'm going to get that threaded into the groove there. Hold my sample together. Put that till it just touches, then you spin your cutter head a little bit, find its highest point. So that should be right about there. And then we can pull that out. So now this cutter head should be set for width to this fence. So now On this machine, on a 360, you have two ways to lock this in. It's very important you lock this spindle in because they will creep as the machine's running if you don't. I have this Allen bolt here, and also underneath there's a handle that you can tighten. I find it very hard to get that handle underneath. I know on my old 260, that was the option, was the handle underneath. So you reach under there and you tighten that and it clamps it. So make sure you lock that off so it doesn't creep. Now, here's a pro tip for you. You got pretty close when you set this, but it's not going to be perfect. So now you're set to width. Now you back this back off just a little bit. About an eighth of an inch is all it takes. Make sure you clear your cutter head. Tighten it back up. Now what's going to happen, when you run your test board, it's going to come through here, it's going to get machined by this side. When it gets here, you want to run it to about this feed roll. It's going to start getting cut by this head. There'll be a gap here. Stop the machine, bring this fence forward, touch that workpiece. That's going to give you a perfect set. That way, you won't get a snipe. If you, you're gonna be pretty close setting it with the, the rule like I just did, but it's never gonna be perfect and you'll end up getting a little bit of a snipe one way or the other. So if you run the machine, run the piece through, then bring your fence to it, you'll get a perfect set every time. So hopefully that little trick is worth watching this video alone. So then you're gonna tighten this up. If you need to, you'll loosen these two bolt heads here, this fence slides back and forth so you can clear your cutter head. You never want to run it too close to your cutter head, you want support, 
but you don't want to take the chance of your cutter head cutting into the fence. Same way with the front here. And I glossed over this, but if you're running an MP260, you're going to do the exact same thing for your front fence. You're going to loosen the two bolts. You're going to move that fence however you need to move it. It's not an automatic fence like the 360. On this machine, to set the depth of my first cutter, I just loosen the handle and I move it up and down to the desired cutting depth I want. On a 260, you're going to use the plate system. So you're going to loosen the four screws, add or remove shims to control your cutting depth. So at this point, we have three heads done. The top head in this setup is going to be really easy. I'm just going to crank my height adjust handle till I get to the height I want. In this case, I'm making three quarter inch. So I'll crank that till I get to three quarter inch. I have to do two more steps here. I need to put in a back relief head or back relief knives, I should say. I have them prepped here. So I have my Gibbs and my knife. I'm running four of them here. So they slide into the head. There's a little notch there where the bolt goes in. And they slide in and go across. Actually, I lie, I'm only running two here. I don't know what I was thinking. This, uh, this is narrow flooring, so I'm only running one on each side. So that'll get tightened down. Flip it around on the opposite side of the head. You're gonna put in another one. I'm gonna use my broken blank here and I will find the location that's at center. I'll do that after the fact. And then that just gets tightened down with your 10 millimeter wrench again. If you're doing molding, you may have some kind of back relief on the bottom and a head on the top. The molding knives on the top work the same way. Put a gib in the knife, or you might have multiples, slide them across, get them set up. You have to set them up with your fence. All this takes some fine tuning to get everything just right. You're gonna to need to run a couple sample pieces till you get everything dialed in just the way you want it. But they simply move back and forth through the head there. Other than that, the only other step, you're gonna take a blank, which I guess I wasn't super prepared here because I should have had a blank cut for you. In this case, with my flooring, that's about three and a quarter inch flooring plus a quarter inch tongue. So that's about a three and a half overall width. And on flooring, I like to run an eighth on each side extra that I'm taking off with the machine. So if I'm at three and a half, add an eighth on both sides, I'm gonna have a three and three quarter inch blank is what I'll start with. For your profile, you need to decide how much you wanna take off of each side cutter head, how much you're taking off the top and bottom and you need to size your blanks accordingly. I find about an eighth of an inch is a, is a nice size for most things. If you're taking a heavy cut, sometimes it has to be a little bit less. You have to figure that out for your own application. But since I'm taking, what I say, three and three quarters, I will rip a three and three quarter inch blank strip that I'm gonna run through the machine. I'll set it here against this fence and then I will loosen this up, the side pressure roller here. Yeah, that gets loosened up. And then I will not do it one handed, but I'll be able to slide this in and out to put enough pressure on. You want, basically what I do at this stage, I'll put the blank against the fence and I will push this up and just put a little bit of pressure on and then I'll tighten it and that's usually enough. You don't want too much pressure because it's gonna bind, it won't feed as nice. And if you don't have enough pressure, you'll see some snipe, you'll see it where it tries to push away. So you gotta kind of balance that. That's another thing with your test board, trial and error. And that's the same on the 360 or the 260. These are the, the same setup on how you do that. So at that point, at least for my flooring setup, everything is pretty much done. Like I said, I'll run a test board. If I was accurate, sometimes you nail it on the first shot. Sometimes you gotta make a little tweak here or there. 
but that's the basics of it. Flooring, four-sided planing, shiplap, that stuff all goes pretty easy. It's the same basic setup I just showed you. When you get into more intricate molding profiles, sometimes it, it really takes some tweaking to get everything dialed in just the way you wanted. But the same basic setup of this machine is the same every time. You know, you just go from one head to the next and you set everything up in order just the way I showed you. And it's not that complicated and you'll learn You'll learn what you're looking at as you go, as you get more used to it. You'll learn what to do, what not to do. You know, I just showed you basically everything there is. It's just, I guess the best way to say it is you kind of get a feel for it the more you do it. So, uh, that's basically the setup. These are good machines, guys. I, uh, I really like it. It does a lot of work for me. If you have any questions, give me a shout in the comments. Uh, hopefully for a couple of you out there, it's uh, maybe cleared some things up on how they work. So I'll catch you later.